Hey, so I'm back on everybody. Uh, it would help if I grabbed the microphone, huh? What's up? So anyway, uh, welcome back to the Shimmy Show. Today I'm talking about black in Canada. What's it like to be black in Canada? Some of you might be curious. I don't know. Anyway, uh, if you look at my archive of videos, there's some videos in there called Black in the Philippines, Black in Thailand, Part 1, 2, and 3, etc. I've been traveling, traveling, traveling all of my life. You know what I'm saying? I've lived in several countries and I'm in Canada right now as I make this video. I'm actually a permanent resident of Canada. You know what I'm saying? It's, it is what it is. I, I've been here for long enough back and forth in cumulative time to I think give a pretty good assessment of Canada. For those of you who are wondering, I've been coming here since I believe 2000 or 99, maybe even 98, I'm not sure. I think it might have been 99 actually. Yeah, since 1999 I've been coming here, so that's been 20, little over 21 years. It's a lot of time on the ground here. So most of my time has been spent here in a city called Thunder Bay, Ontario in Canada, right across the U.S. border, and uh, it's where I'm currently at. So most, most of my views or whatever are going to reflect that. I have explored, I've explored a good part of Canada. I've been as far west as uh, Red Deer, Alberta. I've been through Winnipeg, of course, as some of you may know, and Thunder Bay. I've been the other way also, too. Toronto and uh, Quebec, Montreal. I've seen Niagara Falls. I've seen pretty much most of it except for the upper northern northern territories where it gets really 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 fucking cold so you know what it is um i might want to even check that out one day just just some kind of curious about shit really so anyway let me tell you what it's like to be black in canada for one it's actually not as uh it's not as bad or as negative as a lot of people might think i mean gr growing up in the united states of america california florida and whatnot it's uh it's a different experience than being black in Canada because there's not really a large black population here, especially in the area of the country where I'm at. Uh, from what I understand in the Toronto area, there's more uh, Caribbean Islanders and uh, people there, black peoples from there. But uh, in the area I'm at, there are none. It's basically, I would say, I'd have to look this up, but I mean, the demographics here appear to be 95% of the people are either white or native, and the other 5% are immigrant basically your your other miscellaneous population that i fall in that i fall into so there's not really a whole lot of black people around around town here you know you see a stray black person every now and then they'll wave sometimes they ignore you etc you know africans are good for the you know but i mean overall uh you, most of the interactions you're gonna have with people 90 95 percent of the time they're going to be white canadian or native canadian american whatever you want to call them first nations i think they prefer to be called themselves most of the time here so those are who are the people you're going to interact with so most of my experiences have to do with that here and it is what it is um some some things are actually better than america here um for starters in canada the first thing i notice is uh the water quality and i have tested it here too it's actually almost drinkable you know it has only like 120 or so ppms particle per millions or whatever and the ph is pretty good you know what i'm saying so the tap water is almost drinkable you wouldn't even dream of drinking the tap water in america most of the time we have to get it from vending machines or buy it at the store in gallons or whatever but uh the tap water here much like in some european countries in holland amsterdam you can drink the tap water there it's so good and so perfect because they've just taken care of it like that so certain levels of infrastructure are better here for that the air quality here, at least in this particular city, is pretty good, as long as you're on, not on the other end of town or whatever. But it's pretty good air and water quality, which is good. The downside is cold as a motherfucker. As of right now, as of the at the time of me doing this video, in this warm, heated back room I'm in right now, it's over minus 30 degrees Celsius outside. In the wintertime, it is so fucking cold, the car battery will freeze in some cases. Sometimes the oil in the fucking engine block will freeze if you don't have a block heater. Those are the kind of things I did not have to contend with the United States, at least in the parts I was in. So... None of this has anything to do with being black or whatever, so let me get to my point or whatever here. Um, I have to notice that 
this is kind of maybe a worldwide thing I'm used to by now. If you're a black guy, you're either going to be feared or fetishized by the general population. Generally, I, I tend to fall into the fetishized category or whatever. I look like a safe Negro. I don't, I'm not, I'm not large, I'm only five foot nine, small build, athletic, but I'm a small guy or whatever. I don't think I look too intimidating like a basketball player, football player size, big hulking, uh, you know, gorilla primate size black man that most people are probably scared of or have been conditioned to be scared of or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, again, my dad's Ethiopian, my mom's black, so I'm kind of small, I'm a small guy, I'm a little guy, I'm a runner is what it is right so um, but I still uh, most people have never actually had an interaction with any Ethiopians it's a very small country etc the people don't travel to only about three or four countries around the world mainly you know usually for work and whatever or exile etc but um yeah so I'm a weird looking motherfucker to most people but I'm gonna be generally cast into the black man category which means a few things actually you're D for one, if you're a black man in any country in the world and you're not an athlete or an entertainer, your default job is going to be security guard, generally first, second option, janitor, third option, probably driver of some sort. Yeah, that's basically it, man. That's really what you're cut out to. And I've had many security guard jobs throughout my life, actually. It's it's like almost like uh, I feel like the, the colonialism or the racism or whatever you want to call it is so deeply ingrained in people's minds that if I were to walk into a bank and apply for a job, they're going to default assume that I'm going there to be the security guard. You know what I'm saying? They know that I'm not doing the numbers or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just a sad way of things it is. You know, it's like people perceive you and place you in places where they think you should be perceived, I guess. So... I guess you can have a pretty good life up in Canada, you know, so long as you have your own money and work for yourself and have some means to support yourself where you're not dependent on a system to cast you into some caste system based job. It's really true. I mean, if you're a black man, your chances are slim to get any kind of office work or any kind of clerical work or whatever. They're gonna hire you for them be the muscle. You're the scary guy at the fucking door and that's been me on many occasions with a little fucking ray two-way radio on your hip. Your job is to stand there and look intimidating and whatever and in general most people aren't gonna consider robbing a store if a black man's a security guard. Look at look at most of your average shopping malls anywhere, especially high-end shopping malls. It's gonna be almost 100% black man security guards. You know what I'm saying? And it's a goddamn shame that's the only role you got carved out for us. In society, it's like those are the things that are uh, presented to you on a platter. Like, here, come and take them. Here's a security guard job if you want them. Here you go, boy. Here you go. You want to shine our shoes at the airport? Here you go. Here you go. Like that. So I don't necessarily like doing that shit. That's why I work for myself and I do my thing and I run my little shop, make my movies, and do my own little thing because... I don't like being cast into those literally slave, slavery-based type of colonial occupations or whatever. I'm not with that shit. I'm not with that shit. It's not just because I'm shimmy. I think it's partly because I'm just Ethiopian or whatever and we're just stubborn people that have never been colonized or whatever. I think that kind of runs in our blood or whatever, but I'm not with that shit. You know, I'll, I'll be the boss even if it's of a fucking garbage truck, whatever. So long as I'm the boss, that's fine, okay? I, I don't like doing this working underneath people and shit like that or doing what people think I should be doing you know what I'm saying and the few stints of my time up here in Thunder Bay I've had to do a few little odd jobs when my business wasn't doing well etc you know I've delivered the newspapers here in town both of them I've worked at casinos I've worked at uh, the damn Indian place whatever tribal office or whatever they call it you know, I've, I've done whatever, man. I've installed satellite dishes on people's roofs around here, around town. Whatever, Mr. Website Designer guy, this guy, that guy. But for the most part, I know that if I ever did hit close to rock bottom, I could always find work as a security guard or a taxi driver or something along the lines of what I mentioned, stereotypical labor where they're like, it's almost like you have to almost be black just to get the job. You understand what I'm saying? It, 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 it's trippy or whatever, right? So 
I, I can't really say that. Uh, I mean, you could say this every every. You could say that oh, everyone is racist or whatever. I can't really say that I've been um, too fucked with too hard here. You know, I have had my my store here has been robbed and shoplifted and burglarized and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's because I'm black. I think it's just because I'm shimmy cash, etc. But you know, I, I can't attribute that necessarily to racism. You know what I'm saying? People. People are opportunistic and there's just a lot of fucking dope fiends and thieves and shit like that in the neighborhood I happen to be in at the moment or whatever. A lot of scallywags and motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? So I can't really say that's due to racism or discrimination and I can't really say that's, uh, you know, it's just a fucking neighborhood, I guess, you know what I mean? But I will say one thing, though, you know, as far as like the black in Canada racism thing, uh, people are not used to seeing me or humans who look like me i realize that my hair freaks them out or whatever white people in general i'm referring to here uh, a lot of them have never touched black people's hair they won't they re they're really big about touching my fucking hair etc and stuff like that i mean it's again it, it goes along the lines of fetishes fetish fetishization did i say that correctly you know what i'm saying it's all good if I like the girl, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of times I feel like I'm being stared at like a fucking farm animal, you know? I remember when my kids were young once and uh, I think I was pushing them on a swing or whatever. And some other mama, some other lady comes to the park or whatever and she's got a kid. And the little fucking kid runs, the white kid, by the way. He runs up to me and she says, Mommy, is he an Ewok? Me. And I had longer dreads at the time or whatever, and I guess to the kids, the kid ain't never seen a black man before with dreadlocks, so I guess I look like a fucking Ewok to him. Because that's the closest thing that I look to like in his world or whatever. And this kid had to be like about four or five years old or whatever. You know, then mama came over to me and she apologized and shit. Oh, you know, he, he's seen it on TV and he, we're not racist. <laughs> <laughs> shit like that <laughs> you know what I'm saying uh, the hospital here in town the Thunder Bay when one of my kids was born um, nurse says some shit like uh, oh he's such a cute little monkey <laughs> or something like that and my mom's happened to be present at the time too and she was just like so rightfully offended you know how dare you call my grandson the monkey so and so so and so <laughs> you know, that kind of shit so Okay, if there is any racism here in Thunder Bay, it's very subtle. If it's directed toward me in general, it's it's not harmful, good-willed racism most of the fucking time. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You, yeah, you get profiled by the police and that kind of bullshit. I've been pulled over every now and then, you know, with the whole where you're doing, what you're going, what's this and this, that and the other. I might look like some other nigga they're looking for around here. I don't know. I doubt it. But I mean, really, in general, um, the law enforcement, et cetera, around here, they just want to know, hey, there's a new guy here. Who the fuck is he? Let's run his ID, make sure he's not wanted, et cetera. And what is he up to? Well, I'm probably going to go run around the fucking lake because that's what Ethiopians do. I'm a running addict. So you boys in blue can just follow me running around the fucking marina or the lake or the trail or something. It's all that I'm going to be doing, basically. It's what I do, running. You know, as people ask me, why do you run so much? I don't know. It's what niggas do. Shit. It's difficult to explain. I have the urge to do it. So, anyway, yeah, that's, that's really, I mean, the black in Canada. The other parts of Canada I've explored, actually, like bigger cities, you know, like I say again, Winnipeg, uh, Toronto briefly, Quebec, whatever. I really kind of liked Montreal, the way it looked, actually. Um, but the whole thing that it, Canada does have in common all over, it's cold as a motherfucker all over, seasonally, of course, but it's some shit. I, I, don't, I don't really think that I could live here permanently year-round. I think that constant winters and shit would age me exceptionally faster so i'm gonna have to either live here and get vacation home somewhere else and hop around etc throughout the rest of my life like i have been doing or whatever but um the cold weather really ain't no joke here people it is like it's so fucking cold sometimes you might not be able to go outside for like four or five days at a time for running exercise or whatever i've been exercising indoors here lately and that kind of bothers me etc it kind of bothers me that i can't see a blue sky or a fucking yellow sun for months on end. The sky is just fucking white. Everything is fucking white, 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 white. I'm just all whited the fuck out here. You know what I'm saying? It's 
it kind of can get depressing at some points until you unless you have an actual hobby or something like this youtube channel or my other projects etc going on then you can easily go nuts up here i think that's one reason why there's so many alcoholics and drug addicts and just general gambling addicts there's all sorts of addicts display like and i'm a running addict etc <laughs> but i mean it's like I guess a good way of putting this is addiction flourishes and thrives in areas like this that are kind of isolated and cut off communities. You know, it's like people need to, for whatever reason, they, this probably wouldn't happen so much in a big city, but in a small little town, it's like addictions are rampant. People need to escape from fucking everything, their own head, their relationships, their family, their this, girlfriend, boyfriend, this, that, the other. Uh, people are looking to... Uh, escape or whatever and they gotta do it they gotta do it they gotta have it or whatever right so yeah that's the interesting part about being in this little isolated area i guess yeah but overall my experience in canada so far has been overall positive i highly recommend everyone in the usa to check it out if you haven't already you're you know you're missing out on a lot of stuff here um i can't really say that i like the food too much that's why I, that's why i do my own little food thing here or whatever i'm i'm just I don't like a lot of the fucking all the there's the food here the di the default diet in Canada is just too too much meat starch potatoes vegetables and shit that I just don't like consuming you know I, I tend to only go to the international aisle in the grocery store and get my little stuff for here but um, I'm not very fond of the food most of the by the way most of the countries that I go to I don't like the food so don't take it too personally you know I, I don't like food in Dominican Republic I don't like Costa Rica food is tolerable. Colombian food is tolerable. Uh, most Caribbean food, like Puerto Rican food, I can't stand. Dominican food, I can't stand. Really, only Jamaican food is really the only Caribbean food that I like. Um, I prefer Thai food. I prefer more of an Asian, Eastern type, type of diet or whatever. But I'm not into bread, meat, potatoes, starches, eggs, anything cooked in a fucking oven. It's just not for me, really. I, I just don't like that shit. It's not. It hasn't been a part of my diet for a very long time, and I've been, uh, you know, very happy with shit the way it is. So, the food is definitely not on par to whatever I think is good. I, I also think the cost of food and the cost of living in general is rather expensive here in um, Canada compared to a lot of parts of the states and especially Asia, etc. If you could afford to actually make your own money, it would make sense for you to live in a country where you're, you know, you're US or Canadian or Euros or whatever are more leveraged to give you a higher standard of living. Uh, Canada is a good place to, uh, I would say it's like a launching starting pad or whatever. It's a good place for probably business and to make a little bit of money but uh, the cost of uh, I, I found that the cost of homes and just rent in general and you know basic necessities the cost of basic necessities is kind of astronomical the cost of food is very high in the grocery store the cost of gas is high compared to what I'm used to paying and I'm just I'm you know I'm a cheap African I'm not used to getting peeled and Canada is not a very cheap country by any means at all Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, it's not a good, not a place to come to if you're thinking of saving money. You know what I'm saying? By, especially if you're a fucking consumer. Now, if you, if if you're like a, if you're a real penny pincher like me, a real J word I can't say. You know what I'm saying on YouTube? You know what I'm saying? It's like.